So do you struggle with an inconsistent strike with your irons and maybe a lack of power? Well, if you do, I'm gonna share with you two really simple exercises in this lesson which can help you improve all those aspects of your game. So today I'm going to share with you two incredibly easy and simple to do drills which are really going to help you with your downswing, your ball striking and your power. And also please make sure you stay to the end of the video because we're going to cover something, a really important point which can really tie all this together and really see those results, I should say, happen on the golf course. Now just before we get started, if you're new to my channel, I'd love it to be a part of this community. There is a subscribe button somewhere below. Give that a click as well as the little bell icon. That just means you'll be notified each time I do release a video. And finally, if you want some more in-depth training to really elevate your game, please head over to my website, chrisryangolf.com. There's a clickable link over here, some training courses on there which I really believe can help you with your game. Right, so what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about that really common fault, and you can let me know in the comments if this is something that you've struggled with, because so many golfers do, of casting the golf club, where we kind of throw the club head early in the downswing, we lose all those angles, we throw that power away, and we really struggle with strike. If you listed the most common faults in the amateur game, this would be pretty high up on that list. It's just so common. There's multiple reasons why it happens, but we're more gonna go into the kind of fix and we're gonna give you some really simple ideas on what you can do in practice to start to, you know, control that golf club better, almost increase or decrease, depends which way you're looking at it, decrease that angle. And that's really gonna help you as you come into impact to deliver that speed where we want it, which is down at impact. Now this first little exercise is a real eye opener for a lot of golfers because it kind of gets us to believe or understand that you don't have to create this power you just have to allow it to happen. What do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about grip pressure. And when we talk about grip pressure, we really have to talk about how much pressure is applied through the fingers to the golf club, but also your wrists, how loose or how tight your wrists, and they are different. So watch what would happen if I took a sort of stance like this, put the club out in front of me, obviously my arms extended, and took my grip pressure as light as I could, and I'm talking as light as I could, and kept my wrists as light as they could as well. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my body back and I'm gonna rotate my body through. Watch what happens. So this grip pressure is incredibly light. Body's gonna go back, body's gonna go through. Completely lost control of the club. Do that again, body goes back, body goes through. Completely lost control of the club. But if I was to sort of mimic what happened there is as I started to turn my body back, the club actually got left behind and eventually it caught up. And when I started to turn my body towards the target, we had this kind of movement and the club kind of fell out my hands. Let me just show you that once more. Okay, body goes back, body goes through, no control of the golf club, that's useless to me. Let's go the opposite. Let's go as much pressure as I can on the fingers, as much grip pressure as I can, and then tight through the wrists. Well, watch what happens now as I go back and through. Okay, everything stays in one piece. Now, we don't see that in the golf swing either. So, gripping the golf club really tight is not what we want. Gripping it really lightly, too light, is also not what we want. Let me try and find what I'm gonna call the happy medium, the nice blend of the two. And just if I tip this down a little bit, just watch what happens to this structure here between my arms and the club as I make that little movement. Okay. Notice what's happening there. As I go back and as I transition between backswing and downswing, I'm actually encouraging or creating more angle in the golf club. Now, when I say creating, like I said a moment ago, I'm not trying to do that. I'm allowing it to happen. So what we know is that the golf swing movement should create that lag. It should create that and it should stop the casting. So if you are casting, it suggests that there's too much work being done by the hands. So our first exercise is to really start to strip that down and start to just almost feel like we're letting go a little bit. We're kind of feeling like we're in less control of the golf club and for a lot of golfers that's a difficult feeling. So what I'm going to do is I've got my ball teed up as you can see and I'm literally just going to stand here and I'm just going to go body back, body through. And you'll notice that that lag, if you want to call it that, is being created fairly naturally by the movement. I'm not trying to do that and that's 
I can't stress enough how important that is. It's not me trying to do that, it's just happening fairly naturally. So I've got super light grip pressure and nice light wrists. And there we see it. Now there was no chance in that golf swing that was ever gonna cast the golf club. Now I appreciate that swing was only short, but hopefully you can start to see how provided the movements are correct and the grip pressure is correct and we're, as I say, kind of letting go a little bit and feeling like we're not forcing the golf club to the ball, we can create that. We're never going to cast the golf club if we're doing it in that fashion. I would absolutely encourage you to start with that little exercise. And there's nothing wrong with building that up a little bit. I've got my ball teed nice and high. Pretty important we do that. We don't necessarily want the ball on the ground at this stage. But again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go turn back, turn through, nice light grip pressure and just feel like the golf club lags behind me. Same movement. That's the first drill, really, really important. And that might take you a few swings to get it right because it is gonna be a different feeling for you and it's gonna be a different way of controlling the golf. You will already start to feel more lag and I absolutely love that little exercise. Right, next one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take an alignment stick and I'm gonna place it on the floor here. Okay, and I'm gonna stand with that probably just less than the club head width inside my trail heel. Now I've got myself a six iron here and you'll see that when I set with a six, set up with a six iron, the club head is probably maybe one and a half clubs in front of that alignment stick. Now what do we see with the cast? Well, we see this backswing, we see this type of movement and then we know that that leaks, sorry, links to a very shallow approach. So a casting movement here would cause me to hit that alignment stick. Very, very simply. The goal here, and this is what I would call an external drill. It's a task drill. I'm setting you a task, and you have to make the right movement in order to achieve that task. Very simply, you're gonna set your golf club, as we said, just in front of the alignment stick. And I want you to very much try and get the golf club to land on the ground, target side of the alignment stick. There's only one way you can do that. And that is taking this angle here, and having more of it, or less of it, depending on which way you wanna look at it, as we approach the golf ball, okay? So let me show what that would look like. I'm just gonna go back, land the club. Back, land the club. And you can see that I'm effectively making the same movement as I was when that ball was on that tee. I'm just making a slightly longer goal swing. And notice also that I'm able to create that nice transition and get rid of that casting move without speed. These are slow swings, these aren't aggressive. And that's probably a really important point because when we try to add the speed, that's when we start to get this happening. That's when we start to get the arms and the wrists doing too much. It forces your body back this way, it forces the club down to the ground. You won't be able to achieve this task. You won't be able to perform this little drill. So having this little station as your secondary way of practicing, super important. Now, similar to what we said before, all we're gonna do is drop the ball in, but let's try and do everything the same. So we're gonna put the club just in front of the alignment stick, alignment stick just in front of my heel, same feeling, nice and smooth, get that nice transition. And then we get the ball being struck nicely, we get the golf club interacting with the ground and we get rid of that cast. So at the start of the video, I said there was a really important point at the end that we need to cover, so we're gonna do that now. So many golfers cast the golf club because the club face is open in the golf swing. So if your club face is open, the little drills that we've just done are gonna make you worse. <laughs> the cast is actually in there to help you. So those little exercises, if you do those little exercises and suddenly the ball starts to go almost 45 degrees off to the right, making you worse, it would suggest that it's because the club face is open. So how do you fix that? Well, there's a little device I've got on my golf club here called the hanger. And what you can see is that as I place the club behind the ball, there's a gap between the forearm and the hanger. If, as I get to the top of my golf swing, that gap is still there. And as I start my downswing, that gap is still there. That means my club face is open. How do I deal with an open club face? Well, I start to throw the club head like this to make it work and that's where the cast comes from. So if you find those little drills are making you worse, get something similar to this and obviously you can just be a little bit creative and create your own little device if you haven't got one of these. We need those little exercises that we did 
to be done with the hanger against my forearm. You can see that there. What that's doing is it's controlling the club face and it means that I can still make those little movements. There's that kind of lagging movement that we wanted, but I'm getting this onto here. We haven't got the face significantly open because that's when we start to cast. So something like this is super important because we have to have the club face under control if those drills we've just run through are to work. Okay, so same little exercise. But this time, you can see that hanger is away from my forearm, but as I transition, it's going to go onto that forearm. That controls the club face, and that allows those drills to work. So really important that we understand the, the role of the club face in all of this. If the club face is out of position, those drills are not going to work. So let's finish up with a swing and a shot. Just got my six iron here. But if I do all those things correctly that we've discussed in this video, I should be able to strike it well. Just like that one. So, stop casting the golf clubs. Really important, all we really focus on is making the right movements to allow the right thing to happen, as opposed to just trying to actively stop it. Get the sequencing right, get the order right, get the grip pressure right, and you will start to have a better transition, less cast, better golf shots, all that kind of stuff. Golf's more fun, loads of scores. Everyone's jealous of your golf game. That's exactly where we want you to be. So thank you for watching. All the usual stuff is down below, and we'll hopefully see you back here again soon for another video.